What's going on, guys? Uh, this week, I just wanted to take a look at a couple of the uh, holdbacks that I held back in 2018. And I'm also going to take a look at some of the holdbacks from 2017 that, uh, that, that are how, how they've aged, how they progressed, you know, show you guys some stuff with a bit of size on it. This is not actually a holdback, but I just wanted to, to give a little update on this guy. Uh, this is a male uh, Firefly Lesser Clown. And I just really like the way he's coming, he's growing, he's, you know, the whites that come up the sides, just, just a really, really neat, really neat clown combo. Um, you know, if this had a had that, I was shooting for an orange dream in here, and uh, if it had a had the OD in there, I would have, I'd be keeping this, but unfortunately, um, unfortunately I didn't get the OD, but that's okay. This guy can go, uh. Go do some awesome things for somebody else. So this is a fire, firefly lesser clown, and that's a boy. All right, let's take a look at something else. Here we have another boy, uh, and this is an orange dream desert ghost pos hat clown. So he's fifty percent hat clown. Uh, a lot of people have that I've talked to think he's going to prove. Uh, most of the Orange Dream Desert Ghost stuff is very clean. Uh, not that this guy's not clean, it's just uh, they don't not as busy of a pattern, all this dotting going on. So I, I would love for this guy to prove to be a heck clown. Again, only one way to find out. Uh, I have a funny feeling he will. I saw some of the OD DG stuff that... Uh, that Ozzy made this year, and it was a lot cleaner than this. It was, not, the cleaner is the wrong word. It wasn't as busy as this. Same sort of, same sort of orangey hues and everything, but uh, but not nearly as busy. So this is an Orange Dream Desert Ghost Pos Het Clown, fifty percent Het Clown male. Uh, I really think he's gonna prove, but uh, we're gonna find out. So not obviously he's too small to breed this season, but we'll breed him next year and see uh, see if we get any clowns out of it and. Who knows if I'm feeling brave enough, it might even pair him to double hat stuff. And you never know, maybe we'll get a Orange Dream Desert Ghost Clown. Alright, let's keep moving along here. So here's another holdback girl. So this is a Super Pastel Clown. 100% uh, hat Desert Ghost. So this one is a, a clear holdback. It's a, you know, killer clown. 100% Het Desert Ghost. I just don't see how I could go wrong with it. You know, you start to breed this into double Het DG combos or, you know, even if I just bred it to that Orange Dream Desert Ghost Paws Hat Clown. I mean, the worst that could happen is that he doesn't, he doesn't prove and she, uh, and I end up with, what do I end up with? Pastel Orange Dream Desert Ghosts, 100% Het Clown. I mean, that's not so bad either. Uh, so here's a, Super Pastel Clown, 100% Het Desert Ghost female. She's gaining some weight. She's uh, she's really eating really well. So uh, just put her in the rack and let her uh, let her grow up. All right. So here's another 2018 holdback. This is a Firefly Leopard Special, 100% Het Clown. And I'm pretty sure it's yellow belly as well as sorry as well. Uh, all this these white flames. I mean, you do get that in some of the leopard stuff, but not to that extent. I don't think it's got a pretty clear belly. Nothing super crazy going on with the belly, but I don't know. I think it's going to prove to be yellow belly. Either way, I'm holding it back, so we'll uh, we'll find out. I just really like how that combo turned out. Uh, you know. Uh, the way I look at stuff is uh, people always ask, like, how do you decide which to hold back and which not to hold back? And when I hatch something, I think, is this still going to be cool in three years? Is this still going to be useful to me in three years? And with this example, I think, obviously, this, you know, this will be useful for me for the next seven or eight years. So it's just such a power-packed female. Het clown on top of that. You know, obviously, I hatched some Desert Ghost Clowns this year, you know pop them to these and you make leopard special clown 100% head desert ghosts like it just starts to get crazy so that's why i'm holding back a lot of stuff this year 
just building the, uh, building the racks with really nice stuff. And I, I try to do it with all stuff that I've produced. Obviously you have to add jeans here and there, but the, uh, you can't buy stuff like this generally. So you, you really have to make this kind of stuff. And, uh, I'm pretty happy to have hatched this girl. I'll show you her, uh, her sibling. And, uh, I think it's really cool. All right. So this is the leopard pastel leopard special, 100% het clown. And I think this guy's yellow belly as well, to be honest with you. Uh, I know leopard and leopard and yellow belly are really tricky to spot. Uh, but the real cool thing is like what the special did with the leopard. That is not a typical pattern for, for a pastel leopard. Just really, really different. Uh, this is actually going, uh, going to another breeder. Um, you know, really happy that it's going to this specific, specific guy. Uh, really good guy. I'm not going to say who. If he wants to post, he can post it. But it's a fantastic animal. And I, uh, I actually had a hard time letting this one go. But pretty cool. So pastel leopard special. Possible yellow belly. 100% heck clown. Some dark stuff. Now, this is a snake that I actually acquired. Um, I purchased this snake from a good buddy of mine, Phil Robinson. And this is a blackhead Mojave mahogany 100% het clown female. And I am just blown away. This, like, the camera, I'm not sure how well it's going to pick it up, but this is black. Like, the back is just, it's black with the nice blushing. It's just a, just a real fantastic looking animal. The camera keeps sort of changing the hues and tones on it. You guys can see that. It's just unbelievable. The contrast with the nice stripe in it. I just, when I saw it, I was like, Phil, I, I got to take this thing. And he was like, yep, no problem. So I, I'm really happy to have that. Phil, if you're watching this, thank you very much. Fantastic animal. So blackhead, Mojave, mahogany. 100% heck clown. Just crazy cool, right? Love this snake. This girl's in shed. Fortunately, she's in shed. You can see the nice pink belly on her and everything. She's, uh, she's well into her shed, but just wanted to give you guys a little update. She's growing really well. This is a 2017 holdback. It's a super phantom uh, paradox, obviously. Super Phantom Paradox, and it's a 100% het lavender albino. And this is a girl, so if it had been a boy, I might have let it go. But just because it was a girl and how cool it looked, I just decided, you know what, she can stick around. Um, really, she was what I was shooting for in the clutch. I just didn't expect this. Like, it's just crazy cool. So really, really happy with the way she turned out. Um, so yeah, just wanted to give a quick update on this. I'll post a picture of her on my Instagram once she sheds. Uh, she's got to be about a thousand grams now, and uh, hopefully we can breed her in the the winter of 2019 or the spring of 2020. And uh, I mean, if this passed on as genetic, that'd be ama amazing. But there's no way I, I I repeated the same pairing this year, and I didn't get anything even close to this. So, um, but we're gonna put some uh, you know some other lavender stuff into her and see what happens. Another girl, super pastel saying super bright. You know, you don't normally see super pastels this bright at this size. She's about 14, 1500 grams. And uh, it's the double hat that's really, oh, well, she's not very happy. It's the double hat that's really uh, making her shine this much. This is a uh, super pastel double hat uh, puzzle clown. So big, big, nice female to have. It looks like she's going into a bit of a shed. Uh, but yeah, she's a really, really nice female, nice hole back. So hopefully, uh, I mean, we're going to try and pair her once she hits the 1500 gram mark and, uh, you know, hopefully we can, uh, hopefully we can hit some, uh, some puzzle clowns. Dun, dun, dun. You guys know I can't leave this guy out of anything. This is a male desert ghost clown hatched this year. We actually made two of them and this guy is getting brighter and brighter and brighter and just 
absolutely stunning. Little, uh, likes to explore a bit. Relax. So, Desert Ghost Clown, male, exactly what I was looking for. Uh, this started off as super, super orange, and it's getting lighter and lighter and lighter, and it's almost a, not sure how well the camera's gonna pick it up, but it's almost a, like a, a neon-y, yellow -y color. It's a, it's really, really nice. Really, really bright, really clean. He's eating well. So this guy's a huge part of our plans here. Uh, a lot of this season was based around the Desert Ghost Clown project. So we, we've got a ton of holdback girls. And, uh, you know, I've held back clowns for years now. So this guy's going to go in and we're going to start to do, like, you know, combo clowns that are het Desert Ghost and hum combo Desert Ghost that are 100% het clown. And eventually put them all back together and, you know, take this thing specific project to an entirely new level uh, i think if you look at really with the desert ghost clown project you just have to look at what clown combos are good and add dg to it they're going to be amazing so really happy we hatched this guy we actually hatched two and i kept them both because you could always use a backup you never know if this guy doesn't get the hang of breeding or you know, goes on a hunger strike or whatever the case may be. So I just wanted to make sure I had that backup and uh, really happy that they're both doing really well. So Desert Ghost Clown. And last but not least, this is a 2017 Super Pastel Puzzle Female. Uh, I'm not sure any of you guys working with the Puzzle Project, they're never happy. They, uh, they're they really like, you know, kind of just sort of just pissy. They don't, uh, not necessarily hard to work with, but they uh, they definitely have an attitude to them. And I'm sure you can hear her hissing at me right now. Uh, anytime I get bit, it's by a puzzle. It just seems like it's a genetic thing that they're, I can almost identify hets by their attitude. Uh, I'm sure I've talked to a lot of other guys that are working with them and they, you know, can attest to that. Some are, some are great, but I would say that the majority of them definitely have an attitude. I don't really want to try and unball her either because she's not in the best mood, so I can probably get tagged. But I just love what Puzzle brings to the table. Uh, you know, these super bright sides, super bright sides, crazy pattern. They get the super wide eye stripes on them and uh, just really cool animals. I'm going to put her back because she's going to get stressed out. Really cool. Super pastel puzzle. And here we have a pastel puzzle who's put on some real, quite a bit of size actually. She's gotta be 900 grams or so. Um, I don't really weigh them all that often. I just sort of have a ballpark idea. I know what, know how big they are. I can just guess, guess based on when I pick them up, I can sort of feel how heavy they are. Uh, before I start to breed, I make sure they're at least 14, 1500 grams and I prefer three years old. Uh, so yeah, this is a, uh, this is a pastel puzzle. Uh, love this project. You can see what the sides are doing. I would like to stick my hand in there and point to them, but I know I'll get tagged. I'll I'll try it, see what happens. But these these sides are a huge asset to the puzzle project. Really, really nice. And obviously just the pattern is so smashed up. These actually do look like puzzle pieces. And that's what I really like about these guys. Um, some really, really big plans for this. Uh, you know, the puzzle, I... Well, I used to say it was underrated, and I don't think that's the case anymore. I think people are starting to catch on. And, uh, you know, such a nice animal. Uh, clowns brown out. Puzzles, I mean, they do definitely brown out, but they keep these really, really nice sides. Uh, I really want to see puzzle and clown mixed in. I, I've seen a couple combos. I saw the base puzzle clown, but I'd really, really like to see... It was super pastel, firefly, stuff that adds that blushing, and it'll uh, it'll really change. See, uh, that's just typical puzzle. It's, uh, you know, you got to get used to it if you're going to play with, if you're going to work with these guys. Yep. There you go. Okay. All right. I'll put her back. And, uh, that, you know, that's going to be it for, for today, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed, and uh, I will be at the Toronto show uh, January 27th. Make sure you guys stop by, and I uh, will also be in... Uh, Tinley in March, so I, I won't be vending, but I'll just be coming to hang out. So, uh, all right, guys, and stick around because I'm going to show you guys a little bit of the uh, updates on our new facility. All right, guys, have a good one. This room 
is the office. Uh, we're gonna have, there's our heating system over here. Just gonna add the, uh, the actual heater itself. Um, there's our circuit board. And so this is gonna be the office. There's gonna be a desk in here once we get all this stuff out of here. Uh, not too big of a deal, it's just, looks cluttered right now because as we're working on it, it's a, uh, you know, place to put something. And then there's one of the doors. So this is the hatchling room. Uh, I can fit two of the Freedom Breeder 70 bin or 75 bin racks here and two on this wall. Um, and then as we move through here, here's the incubator room. And this is a very, <laughs> this incubator is pretty big. <laughs> this might be a little overkill. I don't ever want to fill this. This is way too much space, but you know what? It's a good problem to have. So that's the incubator. Back into the hatching room, and then we go through the office again. Again, this is the, as of right now, this is just sort of the work zone. And then we move into here. We've got the breeder room. Now I can fit four of the 40 bin racks along this wall. And then on this side of the room, I can fit two 70 bin racks, another 70 bin rack, and a 10 bin. So I, as of right now, I can fill this entire wall. And this is just all extra space. Uh, eventually it'll fill up, but we wanna do it organically and not I want to fill it up with our holdbacks, you know, and not just fill it up with anything. And then here we go. Here we move into the sub-adult room. Um, so the sub-adult room can hold two 40 racks in here and two 40 racks there. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys noticed, but we put in the, uh, the electrical outlets in the ceiling so that the racks can plug just sort of, you know, directly into the roof. Um, and the nice thing that we did was each of those outlets has their own uh, their own breaker. So if for whatever reason a breaker blows, if for whatever reason one blows, it doesn't blow out the entire wall. It blows out one, one rack shuts down. So that way if something goes wrong, only one rack is affected and not the entire wall. Uh, windows have been ordered. They're gonna be in uh, next week or two. Um, Really, really like the fact that we're gonna have some natural light in here. Um, had to get super, super insulated glass. Uh, I think it's like triple pane or something like that. So we had to get super insulated glass just so, uh, just so you know, we, we had some natural light. Right now we have been working out of a basement and it's, uh, well, it's nice. It's, having natural light is amazing. It's just good for taking photographs or videos for you guys. Uh, we've got, Four, five LED lights in the roof, two in the baby or the sub adult room, two in the hatchling room, and I think there's one in the incubator room, maybe two. Just the one, I believe. Yeah, just the one. So it's coming along. Uh, we should be moving in in the probably another month. Uh, this room's been painted. We're gonna be putting our our logo on the wall here. Logo goes on the wall there, and then as you walk in here, we have to still epoxy these floors, uh, clean up the floors and epoxy them, and then we are going to, as you walk into this room, our logo is going to be epoxied directly into the floor here. So it, once it's done, we're going to do a full like unveiling, show you guys everything that there is to see, uh, and you'll we'll be doing more and more videos in here. So, um, so yeah, I've actually got. A, couple guys that I know that want to come over and shoot some videos here once it's done and uh, so you should see a lot more of us a lot more of our stuff floating around in social media YouTube all that sort of thing um, but yeah so hope you guys are liking it and we will uh, keep you guys updated on how it's going thanks guys take care